Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and in today's video, I'm gonna be taking you through a couple of common JavaScript mistakes or errors and how you can fix them. We're gonna begin with one of the most common errors that I see in the comment section of my videos and it reads something like this. Uncaught type error, cannot read properties of null, then in brackets something like reading, then child element count. Now the child element count part depends on what you're trying to do with an HTML element. So the reason why you get an error like this is because uh, you're trying to run some JavaScript code on an HTML element that does not yet exist. Now it's not always gonna be an HTML element, but in most situations, it is going to be one. So if we go inside the text editor right here, I've got this unordered list with an ID of vegetables. Inside here, a list of all these vegetables, right? If I go inside the JavaScript code, we've got something like this. Const vegetables equal to document.gets element by ID, then passing through here, the ID of vegetables. Now, one of the easiest uh, uh, fixes for this problem would be to double check that your query selector or your ID matches your HTML. In this case here, vegetables inside these double quotes matches exactly to the ID in the unordered list. Uh, and it's also got the same casing. So that isn't a problem. Now we can see here, if we were to run this code properly and we check the number of child elements, if it is three, which it is three, one, two, three, we're gonna get an alert message. So the code looks fine. The problem is the JavaScript file is included inside the head of the page. Now, if you were to read this from top to bottom, you will see that the JavaScript code is included right here and it runs straight away before we get to the body where the unordered list is created. So up at this point here, at this higher level, the vegetables ID is yet to exist, which is why you get that error. It says, you know what? This code right here, this, this first line of code, this gets element by ID gives us null and you can't run child element count on null, which is why you're getting that error. So, a couple of ways to fix this, okay? The easiest way and the most common way would be to uh, copy the script and put it at the bottom of the body just like that. So now, of course, it's gonna run all of this first, then it's gonna run your JavaScript code, go back in the browser, it works, and we have the alerts at the top here, okay? Now, the more modern approach would be to keep the script inside the head, but uh, take advantage of the defer attribute. So defer is going to allow your script to be loaded asynchronously with the rest of the page, but it is also only executed once the document has been loaded. So now go back in the browser and refresh, we get the same results, uh, the alert message works. So the whole point of this here, when you encounter this error, it is all about making sure that your gets element by ID or your query selector actually returns a value. It's either gonna be the string itself inside here or the script is being called too early before the rest of the document has been loaded up. This next one is not so much a JavaScript error, but more a mistake that is performed by developers. And it involves double equals versus triple equals. So uh, most of us know that a triple equals comparison in JavaScript also uh, caters for the data type. So it checks the type of the uh, variable or the value as well as the actual value itself. Whereas double equals is a bit more loose and it will do a few conversions for you. Now, that right there is all well and good, but I'd like to show you a practical example of where it, uh, where it can become a problem because I've seen issues like this pop up so many times over the years and it's introduced so many bugs. So we've got this div right here with an ID of container. We've also got two data attributes called item count and visible. And I'm gonna be demonstrating this problem by attempting to retrieve these attributes in JavaScript and then uh, place them inside if statements, okay? So going inside the JavaScript file, I've got three constants here. 
The first one is a reference to the container itself and the bottom two, uh, I'm, I'm, of, I'm of course calling get attribute on the data dash item count and data dash uh, visible. So I've got both the value of five in item count and false in visible. Of course, because we have five here and then false over here. So let's run some comparisons. Let's check if the item count is in fact five. We can say if item counts is equal to five, okay? Let's say alert, we have exactly five items, something like that. If I save this, go back in the browser and refresh here, we get no alert message. Now, of course, the item count is five. So why don't we get a alert message? Well, the reason is due to these triple equals. It's comparing the data type as well as the value. Now, you might think that, oh, look, I've got five right here. Five is a beautiful number inside that attribute. Well, the thing is, it's actually a string. So we're actually comparing is a string version of five equal to five with triple equals? No. So this is because get attribute is always gonna give you a string. This is why it's important to check documentation and things like that. We can see here in VS Code is telling us right here, get attribute is always gonna give us a string or a null if it's not found. But when the attribute is found, we're always gonna get a string back, which is why we need to compare as if item count is a string version of five. So we can solve this fairly easily. For example, using a double equals is gonna give us the alert message. Go back in the browser and bang, there we go, we have exactly five items. Another way to resolve this problem would be to keep triple equals and then use double quotes instead. And this right here would be, I guess, uh, a solution that keeps the strictness of your code, but also, of course, solves the problem. So this is how I would do it because I like to be strict and things like this. So I would check exactly for the same value that is present inside, uh, of course, this constant. But of course, it's up to you guys. Now, I'll confirm back here and we also get the message. Now, the second example here is with the visible attribute and it's the exact same concept. I'll change this if statement to say, look, if visible, we can say the container is visible. Now, this right here is a perfectly valid if statement. If visible was a boolean, but it's not. So we have visible set to false, but we still get the alert message. The container is visible. This is because a string of false contains at least one character. So JavaScript is gonna consider it to be true. If true, right? Then of course, alert the message. So once again, we need to be strict. We can say, if visible is equal to, then we say, true just like that now we're checking for the exact characters of t-r-u-e and now if i go back in the browser refresh the page we get nothing if i set the attribute to be true of course now back in the browser we get the alert message right there so just be careful with your comparisons here and always double check documentation to find out exactly what your methods are going to return this next one is also very common and it involves the cross-origin resource sharing or cause policy. And if you ever used Ajax or Fetch before, then you probably encountered this at some point throughout your life. So it reads something like this. It says, this resource has been blocked by CORS policy. No access control allow origin header is present on the requested resource. Now, this right here is caused by the security policies in uh, modern web browsers. So it's actually a good thing that some of these things are blocked, okay? It's for security reasons, but as a developer, it is frustrating to have to deal with problems like this. 
And an explanation of what's happening here comes down to the server side. So we can see here, I'm requesting this resource at localhost on port 3000 forward slash API forward slash user. So on this API server, it is currently configured to say, you know what? No other website aside from mine should have access to this resource, okay? So when it says origin, this refers to the protocol, the host, and the port number. In most situations, you can just say the website or the domain, right? So essentially, to fix this problem, we need to tell the server side, well, actually, we need to go into the server side and say, you know what? Anyone can access this resource. Now, I've got a video dedicated to this problem and how you might go about fixing it. I'll leave it linked down below and in the top right corner, but I'll show you real quick how we can resolve this issue. So if I go into the API server, which is just, uh, sorry, which is just a, uh, Express JS uh, script, okay? So I'll go inside that right now, inside my server directory, then go into index.js here. We've got a simple server, it returns JSON for the user and so on. Now, before I continue, I wanna go back inside the browser here and open this in a new tab, okay? Localhost port 3000 API user, and look, the data comes back. The request went through because there is no other origin trying to access it. I'm accessing the API directly. Whereas over here, I'm trying to get it from port 550 or 5500, which of course is different to the local host. So that's a problem, right? Anyway, going back inside the server side here, to fix this problem in Express.js, I simply just include the CORS uh, module. Then I say app.use CORS, just like that. I'll restart the server, okay? Go back in the browser here, refresh this page, and the data comes through, okay? If I go inside the network tab here, go inside the fetch XHR, click on this request, we can see inside the headers section, in the response headers, we have access control allow origin set to all. In the previous example, this right here would not exist. Okay, like I said earlier, I got a whole video dedicated to this problem. I encourage you to, to uh, check that one out, but I do wanna show you real quickly here the JavaScript code, which makes that request, just to uh, clarify uh, what's happening here. So of course, it's an endpoint URL, it says fetch, then it says response.json, then it logs out the data. This last one is very straightforward, but once again, I see it quite a bit in the comment section of my video, so I would like to clarify and hopefully help someone out. Um, so right here, we've got two constants called name and username. Then down below, I'm saying console.log, hey, I'm, then I'm using dollar sign and curly braces, to say name and my username is, then I'm once again using dollar sign and curly braces to say username. So the, uh, the intended output of this message would be, hey, I'm Dom and my username is decode. So this right here is JavaScript template strings, which allows you to easily inject uh, expressions and variables inside your strings, okay? That's what the dollar sign and the curly braces do. If I go in the browser here, we get the exact same thing that we typed in. So there is no uh, computation done here. There is no injection of DOM and the username, which I've set as constants. So how do we fix this problem? Very straightforward. We need to use the back ticks near the one on the keyboard for both the beginning and the end of the string. And we can see here in VS Code, and I'm sure in other editors as well, you actually get a different color for the dollar sign and the curly braces. So the editor picks up 
on the template string and the expression you're trying to place inside of there. If I go back in the browser now, we get the actual value of DOM and then decode. So very important to use the back ticks when you're trying to use JavaScript template strings. Now, I'd also like to mention that the back tick is different to the single quote, that one right there. Okay, so you've got three different types, double quote, single quote, but also, of course, the back ticks uh, right there. So, like I said, I get this quite a bit because in my videos, I tend to use the template strings uh, quite often, but maybe some people... Uh, you know, don't notice the fact that I'm using the back ticks. And that is all for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.